Hello and welcome to the opening session of my new podcast series. As before, I'm going to talk about which movies, films about witchcraft, the folklore, history and psychology associated with them. My name is Sami and I'm a psychoanalytic psychotherapist and psychohistorian. Today the focus is on French film and one book behind it that is Russian and location in Sweden where actually the real witch trials have taken place in which several people have been executed. I will first talk about the film and then history. Serpent's Lair. just heard was my version of the tune in the movie Blonde Witch. There's a great music in the movie. The soundtrack was composed by Norbert Glansberg. He was also notable for some famous songs of Edith Piaf. The movie was filmed in the locations Dalarna, Mora, where Swedish witch trials were Furious in the 17th century, the witch trial in Mora and Elvdalen, 1668-1669, is the most famous witch trial in Sweden because a famous illustration was made of it in Germany. There were only few cases in Sweden where the witch was burned alive, I think only one case. So this drawing is also incorrect, but it is widely spread even to the Salem in the USA. The witch hunter in Mora was actually Finnish Lorenz Kreutz as chairman of the witchcraft commission Kreutz took it upon himself to save Sweden from the devil's grip as head of the witchcraft commission Kreutz was ruthless because he was convinced of the correctness of his own actions he was a man who never doubted in two weeks, the commission heard a total of 200 defendants and witnesses. It sentenced to death the 16 inhabitants of Mora and the 6 inhabitants of El Dalen. In addition, dozens of people were sentenced to various flogging and church punishments. But first about the movie. La Sorcière, in English Blonde Witch, was filmed in 1956 and it was directed by Michel. It was adapted actually from the Alexander Kuprin's novel Alicia that was also filmed in 1971. I tried in vain to find an explanation for the fact that many names in the film are Finnish. 
Maila, Matti. In this film it's great that people speak actually French or Swedish. This also highlights the difference between lovers. The main idea of the original novel is that only far from the city and civilization one can meet a person who has retained the ability to pure love. Only in harmony with nature can we achieve nobility and moral purity. Love in Kuprin's novel Alicia is a special gift that is as rare as the protagonist's magical ability. The love has been doomed from the beginning. They are too different. A man would like to transport a woman to his own world. And he is blind to the fact that this is not possible. The woman eventually sacrifices herself to get a moment of approval. A man becomes a slightly better person thanks to love but it is also a slightly perverse fantasy. There is also a spiritual message in the story. The girl who was considered the devil's daughter was closer actually to God than the superstitious and cruel village crowd. It is a fairly small perversion that a girl expects a prince or a boy a princess. An exotic local appears in the fantasies of both men and women. We are afraid that this closure of our deepest fantasies will tell others that we are different and deviant. These worries of rejection open the door to problems such as low self-esteem, insecurity, anxiety, depression, and other emotional issues. Fantasy is not just an escape from the reality, but it can be also an enricher of life, and it can also be used to experience life. In this story, nature and its beauty evoke an ability of empathy for otherness. Similar themes can be found in the Finnish novel and movie Noita Palaa Elämään, where the murdered witch returns to revenge. The girl is like a mummy, innocent, childlike, but erotic wild woman, as Green have put it, that men are studying. The Blonde Witch is played by Marina Vladi, actress, singer, activist, writer. Uh, Vladi was married to Soviet poet songwriter Vladimir Vysotsky, and she has written a book about their relationship. The writer Kuprin wrote this book when he fell in love with the nature and woods in a hunting trip. The film touched me with some emotions of childhood from looking at the world from a child's perspective. In this sense it contains very up-to-date modern ideas for the protection of the nature, tensions between people and longing for our time. It is a mixture of Slavic melancholia, Nordic and French cinema, and it also leaves open questions. So the movie was filmed in the locations of Dalarna, Mora, where we're Swedish witch trials in the 17th century. I am going to talk about that next.
According to Mirka Lappalainen 2018 in her study Pohjoisen Noidat Northern Witches, in her dissertation she has studied especially a Finnish nobleman, Lawrence Kreutz, who was the director of the Dalarna Witches Commission. A lot of historical documents have been preserved from the events, letters and court records. At the beginning of the witch process in 1668, Charles X or Karl X was the king of Sweden, but in fact because the king was just an underage boy, the land was ruled by the government. Politically, the time was turbulent. Levak 1987 has suspected that perhaps also the soldiers returning from the Germany from the Thirty Years' War may have introduced more extreme diabolical ideas to Swedish population. But let's not forget that in Finland's Ahvenanmaa Orland, that was part of Sweden in those times, Already in 1660s, Niels Psylander began his witch trials. But back to Sweden and Dalarna. The events began in Dalarna, in that time called Dalekarlia, when Elfdalen's local policemen wrote to the local authorities about the cases. It was reported that the witches had taken the children with them and take him then to the devil's house. These kind of witches Sabbath stories were called Trodum, according to Eilova 2003. The events were not initiated by state authorities but by local people. There had been talk about witches also before, but there was a new tone in this story. It was a question of devil himself. The safety of the children was in danger and a large number of people were involved. Associated with this story was the fabulous mountain of Blokulla, a blue hill believed to be a place of worship and sort of never-ending festivities for witches. According to Ankarlo 2002, in the Blokula mythology, the features are like mirror images. As in folklore of many countries, Blokula is a light decorated dining hall it's like wedding feast with lots of food, milk and porridge and bread. But the uh, dichotomy becomes perverse. Everything is backwards. <laughs> Even the suspected witches were already locked up in a dungeon prison cell. It did not help. They were still believed to be flying with cows to the mountain because this is how the child witnesses swore. A total of 29 people were charged in Eldaling, 12 of whom were sentenced to death by beheading and were burned after that. But finally the court of appeal eventually decided to execute seven of them. The confessions repeated the same stories of flying a mountain where witches also had sex with Satan and celebrated at parties. Mandatory cleansing operations were also imposed on exposed children. 
they had been special place front in the church services and got some extra prayers. Nenon in 2006 has described how these events began with the stories of two children. According to their stories, they have been herding the goats when the goats suddenly ended up on the island and one of the boys had walked on the water, fetching them back. Amazing. During the interrogation of the local pastor, priest, the story turned into the devil's plots. The nobleman Lawrence Kreutz continued his work in the Paris of Mora. More than 200 witnesses were heard in two weeks. Dozens of people received whipping sentences and 16 people were sentenced to death in Mora. The most incomprehensible thing is that people lied and they also believed that they were telling the truth. No torture was reportedly used at all in the questioning. According to Ankarlo 2002, these people were from the middle and upper classes of the population, not the most uneducated. Adults and children testified, among other things, against their own parents and prayed for their confession. From the other sources I have gathered the information that even the famous symbol of Sweden, Dala Hest, a small red wooden horse, was suspected to be devil's toy that could be used as a transport for flying with it to blow Kulla. It was also described how Satan himself distributed these devil's toys to the children. The work of Kreutz was continued by his brother Ernst Kreutz whose trials could have as many as 105 children accusing one woman of witchcraft. There were more than 300 defendants, 18 who were executed. At the beginning of 1670s, the phenomenon spread to the other parts of Sweden. They ceased in the mid-1670s as criticism gained more political power. According to Ankarlu 2002, the King Karl X had come of age and he abolished the witch commissions. Raisa Toivo has studied how people recovered from these events. According to her, people quite soon forgot, even just a generation after the events, there were marriages between the families of the persecutors and executed villagers. Okay, I'm going to end soon, but what we have learned today is that uh, perhaps you should watch the movie Blonde Witch. I think it's quite interesting and sweet. And we learned about this place in Sweden called Mora. From the Mora started these witch hunts that were spread all over the Swedish region and even to Finland. Thank you for listening and welcome soon again. I think the next episode
will be ready in the beginning of January. Happy holidays and welcome again. <laughs>